Well, thank you all for coming this evening. It's a bit loud. Yes. Well, then I'll speak in a soft voice. Um, first of all, thank you so much all for coming this evening. It's just fantastic to see so many members. It just reminds me of a place that we were just there earlier today, like the co-op. <laughs> and it's just so great to see all of you. I know that um, I was able to connect with quite a few of you while you were coming in, uh, and also roaming around. Some of you have been members for quite a number of years, um, and appreciate you sharing that. Uh, so, so great to see you. Um, I guess at the same time, um, you know, what a fantastic venue. Would you, would you agree? Um, I have to say that then you can imagine there was a lot of planning that went into this evening. You know, first of all, thank you for Echo, uh, for this wonderful venue. Thank you for the Sugar Snap folks who help with a lot of the logistics. Certainly you seem to all be enjoying the food, because we're all about food. Um, so our prepared foods team, Rod, uh, our prepared food manager, his staff, and also all the staff volunteers you see uh, that have been helped, that have helped to really make this a great event. Um, but I also want to draw special attention to two people. Uh, so Allison Weidenhagen, our director of community engagement, and Liz Jarvis, our membership manager. Can you hear round of applause? And their team have just done an amazing job. I think many of you said, wow, I was just at a co-op event. And because that's because we had the co-op food fest just a few weeks ago. And here we are a few weeks later celebrating again. So with that, um, I wanted to introduce uh, Faye Conti, our board vice president, uh, to share with you uh, intros for our wonderful board who are pretty much all here tonight, uh, barring one. Uh, they've just been incredibly supportive of the co-op. They volunteer so much of their time. And you can imagine with all the work around expansion, not to mention the ongoing work for uh, our store, just uh, I am so grateful uh, for all their support and their guidance. So with that, Faye. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Faye. As John said, I'm the vice president of the board. And um, I just want to thank you all for being here. On behalf of the board, this is our big event every year to bring all of our members together to hear about what's going on with the co-op and um, to hear from you about what you're all looking for also from our co-op. Um, so I also want to just also thank John and Allison and Liz and everyone else who's here putting this event on. It's such a fabulous event and it's growing every year. And it's really, really exciting to see all of you come out um, to support the co-op. So I am just going to introduce the board members. Um, so Julia Curry is our current board president. If everybody wants to meet, you all stand up. Um, Allison Searson is here. She is our board treasurer. Liz Gleason is our board secretary. Um, Joanna Grossman, Charles Baldridge, Wayne Warnken. Allie Kenny, and Rachel Jolly, who is not able to be here tonight. Um, so thank you all for being here, and I'm going to turn it over to Allie to hear from the board candidates. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna back up from that mic. Um, so I'm Allie Kenny. I've been recently elected. I've only been on the board for one year now. Um, and my role tonight is to introduce our potential new candidates. Can everyone hear? There's a little chaos over there. Um, so generally we have six or seven candidates in the past many years. And this year we actually have nine. So we're very proud that we have more candidates than usual. Uh, we have four spots this year, um, so each candidate will get one and a half minutes to speak. Um, so make sure you say what's important in your one and a half minutes. Um, and then feel free to seek out any of the candidates afterwards and strike up a conversation and ask them further questions. 
And um, the last note is to please vote by October 21st. That is the deadline. Um, either at the voting booth here or from any computer anywhere. So, first candidate that I would like to welcome up is Sarah Alexander. <laughs> I was going to be going first or last, if it was my first name or last name, but I'm ready. Um, I'm Sarah Alexander. I have been a member of the co-op since 2000, 2009 when I moved to Vermont as an undergraduate at UVM, where I studied sustainable ag and community development. And now I have the privilege of working for the Interville Center as their cleaning and food rescue program, where I connect um, low-income households in Chittenden County with local organic produce throughout the growing season. Um, I'm passionate about the principles of the co-op and it would be a privilege to serve as a member of the board of directors. So I will bring an energetic spirit and pizzazz to the board. So I would love you to Thank you very much. Our next candidate is Amy Powers. Randomly. I wasn't expecting it because I'm not next to it. <laughs> Hi, so I um, have been a member of the co-op for 20 years and um, love it. I've been doing member work for quite a few of those years and uh, I would love the opportunity to step up my, my participation in the co-op as a board member. Um, and if I look at all familiar, it's only because I did this last year as well. I was enthusiastic about being on the board last year and um, ran then. So I'm still interested, still going for it. Um, professionally, I've been working in, um, I started my own business about 15 years ago, working, uh, doing organizational development uh, with a whole host of organizations around the area and around the country. Um, I work with environmental organizations, agricultural organizations, mostly nonprofits, some governmental organizations and foundations, doing um, organizational development work and um, helping them collect data to systematically change their programs as they grow. And um, I would love the opportunity to contribute my professional skills. I've been on my own organization's board for those 15 years. Um, at home in my own community, my the small town that I live in, I've been working toward um, building cooperatives. I have started um, in the past 10 years as my children have been growing up. Um, I have started a child care co-op and a summer camp co-op and a collectively run forest school and most recently helped bring a small cooperative school to our town. And I'd <laughs> like to go to the board and learn more about cooperative management and also contribute my skills um, in organization development. Thank you. I didn't realize I signed up for the job of pulling people off stage. Um, so. <laughs> Our next candidate is Eric Bohm. Hi, I'm Eric Bohm. Uh, my wife in the back corner and I moved back up to Burlington a few years ago. Um, we moved up as a major life choice for us, and that was to find the right community to raise our three year old son in. Uh, and we chose Burlington, right here in the South Range. Uh, as we've settled in, I'm looking to get more involved. Uh, and of any place I see that most closely reflects the community that we live in and what I want it to be, it's the co-op. You know, I think the best example of how the co-op supports this community is the member worker program, which I hope you all know about. And that's encouraging volunteerism out in the community in exchange for making local healthy food affordable at the co-op. Right? And the co-op does that at a major expense to itself, but as a major benefit to the community. And I think that's just one of the great examples of how there's so much more to this co-op, this bottom line, than just a dollar figure. Um, I love how it's locally owned and locally run. Uh, I love how here tonight it's my number one vote. Um, so what would I bring to the co-op? I've got a background in finance. Um, I work at Seven Generation, which is just right across the street from here. And we have a lot of our products on shelf at the co-op. Uh, I spent the last 10 years in the nonprofit sector in DC, 
a variety of organizations and in a variety of fields. Uh, and I've also had board experience. I served on the board of a public charter school. I was about the same size as the club. Uh, I would love to bring that overall work and volunteer experience to the board. Um, and I think I could really support the board in a positive way in this important time of expansion into two more stores. And so hopefully I can convince you tonight on a more individual level from my vote. Thanks. speaking more than death, so it's a real treat for me to be in front of you all tonight. I'm going to stick to my prepared uh, remarks. <laughs> my name is Ethan Hurley. It's an honor to be here tonight with such a large group of well-qualified candidates. No matter which four of us end up serving on the board, I'm sure that the membership will be very well represented. Honestly, I'm wishing I had run for the board before Bernie inspired so many of us uh, to become more engaged in the community. Uh, I'm new to Vermont, having spent most of my life in California with an unexpected stay in West Virginia for the past two years. I could tell you what a special place City Market is and how fortunate we are to live here in Vermont and enjoy it, but you probably already know, and in fact, it's probably why you're here tonight, though the mason jar mugs are an added bonus. I could probably stand here for an hour and tell you why I think it's so great and why I'm so passionate about it, but they've only given us the two minutes to say hello. I do want to say about the receipts, I love looking at my receipt and seeing what percent of what I purchased came from Vermont, and I'm always, um, always hoping for a higher percentage and wanting to get a genuine 100% someday without just buying an apple. <laughs> I've sat on both sides of a board table, both working for boards of staff and volunteering on boards as a director. I've seen well-run boards fly, and I've seen badly run boards falter. City Markets Board is unique in all my personal and professional experience. I've never seen a more thoughtful, forward-focused, precisely run board. It'd be an honor to serve on our board, and so I humbly ask for your vote. <laughs> Everybody is amazing and you can trust that you will be well served, just as Ethan said. Um, I spent the better part of the past four weeks or so at the co-op, maybe talking to a lot of you, um, asking members and neighbors what's important um, moving forward with the co-op. And really what I found is that City Market is the heartbeat of Burlington. I mean, it is an exceptional place to shop, to visit with friends, to see neighbors, and really to connect. And so. Um, to move forward, I think what's most important for people is to have it stay the same. There are a lot of growth opportunities and future transitions that we need to be prepared for. Um, and so I think that with my professional experience working at Sun Generation and most recently at Urban Moonshine, working with hundreds of co-ops throughout the country, understanding the struggles, understanding the importance. Um, I love seeing all of your faces right now. Um, we're all so engaged, and I, with that and my legal studies um, and my academics, I humbly ask for your vote, um, and I'm happy to talk more after my one and a half minutes. <laughs> Thank you all. That was nice, I didn't have to do the poll. Okay, we have Jennifer Kennelly. principles and how the day-to-day -day operations of the co-ops support that. 
Um, so, but as I left my position as director, I realized that I had more to contribute to the co-op, and that's why I'm running for the board of directors today. One of the things that I really think I can add value to the board conversation is around policy. Um, just looking at our policies and how those policies need to grow and evolve as the co-op grows and evolves. I'm sure you'll hear John talking about co-op evolution later, um, and our board policies also need to evolve as we evolve. Um, anyone that knows me knows that I do my job with both head and heart, um, which is why one of the reasons I love my job at the co-op so much is that I was able to be do finances for a company that had so much heart. And I hope to continue to do that on your board of directors. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Joanna Brisman. Yeah. Hello, all right, I'm gonna try and be brief. Um, so my name is Joanna Grossman. Um, I've just finished my first term on the board of directors. For those of you who don't know, you can have three terms. Um, you can win up to three terms, I should say. Each term is three years, so I just finished my first three-year term, and I'm hoping for another. Um, a couple little things about me. I'm the mother of a six-year-old in Champlain Elementary, and I might know some of you through that, through my PTO board work there. I uh, work for the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food, and Markets, so I'm pretty involved in the food system here, and that's definitely part of my um, sort of approach to my board work here is staying connected to the food system, which uh, the board doesn't, or the city work doesn't really need my help with that, but it's always good to tie those things together. Um, I'm a member owner at Interville Community Farm, probably like a lot of you, and I've been a vegetarian for 28 years, so I'll put that in there. So, um, being on the board means being willing to give up time to do meetings, to read a lot of legal and financial documents, to make decisions about finance and real estate, to supervise our general manager, and to make sure that all those things that we're doing match up with our global ends and our cooperative principles. And if you want a little more information about those, you should look around at all the displays and the little tags and um, everything that all the literature that the co-op has up at this event and in the co-op itself. But it's basically all the things that make the co-op the co-op, the wonderful community building principles that we all believe in. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So really quick, um, I'm just going to say that during my first term, I look back quickly, very quickly, at my first term, <laughs> and I'm very proud of the accomplishments that the co-op as a whole has made. We hired John Tashiro, our new GM. We are opening a second store, we're opening a third store, and we implemented Rally for Change, which you all should be very proud of. So, thank you. I don't know if I'm supposed to like, grab it or no, no, you're <laughs> I'll take it for <laughs> Okay, so um, we have Julia Curry now. group 
work, uh, and I've been able to use that as president. Um, in addition, um, since I work with housing, I have a lot of familiarity um, with real estate that has turned out to be very handy <laughs> in this moment, um, and may continue to be so. Um, so, I really would appreciate um, being reelected, but even more than that, I really would appreciate if everyone who comes to this meeting tonight votes. Member voting is really the most important thing that can happen here tonight. Robin Baylor. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Robin. I have been a member on the co-op for about five years and uh, when I first joined I was actually a Food for All member and my first impression was just what a welcoming environment it was when I had to use my three squares for my card um, and that really made me feel super committed and want to get involved so I've been doing a lot of different member work over the last five years. Um, stuffing patronage checks, <laughs> uh, cooking dinner at the food shelf on Sunday nights, and um, more recently I've been representing the co-op at events like Somerville and Winter Farmer's Market, and uh, this winter I had the opportunity to, the summer I mean, the summer I had the opportunity to be on the Seedlings Grant Committee with Allison and a few other people in the room. And that opportunity really inspired me to run for the board. I got to see more behind the scenes about what the co-op does to support the local food system and it was really exciting. So um, it seemed like a natural progression for my engagement with the co-op and also for my professional skills. Uh, I'm a director of an AmeriCorps VISTA program and we work with a lot of nonprofits throughout the state on innovative food security projects. So. Um, I bring that strategic thinking and visioning and focusing on mission with me, and I'd be really honored to bring it to the board at City Market because I think more than anything, I feel proud to be a member, and um, I'd love to serve as a board member as well. Perfect timing. And now we're done, that part. And I'm going to hand it off. Now I have the honor, and I'm really delighted. the microphone, please? OK, thanks. Um, really delighted to announce uh, this year's winner of the Don Schramm Award. It's up this time in the room. I know it was. <laughs> so, this award was created um, to honor Don Schramm and, and his um, example of deep, sustained community engagement. Um, and we have, it's great to be able to see you that year with him present. Um, this year's winner is May Humphrey, who unfortunately could not be here tonight, but a lot of folks. A lot of folks know her and, and all the great things she's done for our community. Um, Meg is really one of Arlington's living treasures. She is part of the blue uh, that really binds the community of the old North End neighborhood. Um, she has a rare ability to bring together young people and old people, you know, people who've grown up in the old North End and people who are new to the city, students, locals, I mean, just everyone, um, and really generating, I think, a, a sense of, of fellowship um, that, that helps you connect everyone together. Whether she's riding her bike around the neighborhood in a secret talk, selling her homemade greeting cards uh, at the old at the old North Rand, excuse me, old North Rand Ramble, um, getting her hands in the dirt with the neighborhood gardening project, serving a community meal, or um, photographing the lake. She, in, in fact, everything she does, um, she really supports and strengthens the old North End um, with a real sense of warmth and grace. Megan uh, founded and serves as the executive director of HAMS, which is a nonprofit helping and nurturing diverse seniors. Um, and in this role, she really brings uh, care and attention to older community members who otherwise really may feel neglected and not very visible in our community. Um, so that's a rare gift. This summer, we learned that HAMS and a partner organization, the Vermont Community Garden Network, 
um, helmed by Jeff Simon here, <laughs> past winner of our award. Uh, but together they won a grant from the Vermont Community Foundation for innovation and collaboration, which will enable them to um, help seniors at senior centers and at um, care facilities um, do vegetable gardening on site. So they're really expanding that beautiful program that they started and kind of um, bringing everything back around between food security, you know, local food systems, um, a lot of the values and virtues that the co-op supports. Um, so that was exciting. Megan is really seemingly everywhere, helping out, but very much in the background, you know, unassuming, um, and really encouraged, trying to make sure that everyone else in our community has a voice. So it's just a great pleasure to, to recognize her here today. share with you just some quick tidbits from uh, the last year of what we've been able to achieve uh, at the call. And uh, it gives me really great pleasure, and I think I speak on behalf of the entire organization that at the end of the day, we are really here to serve you, our members, and the broader community at large. And it is just fantastic to be with such an organization that does so much. So thank you all. Um, and also a special thanks to the board who have worked really tirelessly. Uh, throughout the last year. Uh, it's been so fun working together, many long meetings. Uh, and at the same time, the wonderful board candidates we had, uh, we could hear from tonight. Uh, I'm actually, I like to use a word that's called chuffed. It's exciting. <laughs> I am chuffed to know that we have such wonderful candidates who are running for the board. So thank you all. So. So I'm just going to touch on really a, a few things uh, over the last uh, financial year. And as many of you know, our financial year is from July 1st to June 30th. Um, I'll focus on a couple of things uh, in terms of around access, uh, about strengthening local food systems, about how we enhance our community quality of life. And then also, something that I know many of you are interested in, that we are also excited about, and that's just uh, an update around our expansion. Right, so let's look at membership. So you can see how this chart has just grown healthily year after year. And it is just amazing. I don't know if you wondered how many people might have RSVP for tonight. It was over 800. That is just unbelievable. It was as if we were launching a new cinematic film out there as people were just chewing up. Um, but now, um, many of you know that our membership continues to grow very healthily. Um, we saw quite a bit of growth over the last financial year. We hope to continue to have this growth, and certainly with our expansion in the South End, we hope to see uh, that, that continue. So once again, thank you for your membership, because at the end of the day, that is what helps us enable uh, the things that we can do to ultimately impact the community. Um, I'd be remiss to say that at this point, just the fact that we have such great staff. Um, just, can we hear it from our staff? We are all I, cannot, I really just can't say enough. And you, you know, there are many in this room. Actually, by a show of hands, can I just, can you just raise your hand if you are, you currently work at City Market? You know, and many are working out there. <laughs> A lot of um, staff volunteers. I mean, our staff of about 230 is just unbelievable. Dedication and equipment, I cannot say uh, more about them. Um, it, it's, they work tirelessly. And uh, I think all of you have experienced when you come into the store, um, you know, we talk about customer service, we talk about member engagement, we talk about how we really care uh, about um, our members and the broader community. And it just shows through our staff. So, um, you know, as a co-op, certainly, we offer great wages and great benefits. Um, 
and we also look forward to, as we expand in the South End, uh, looking at about 100 new staff positions uh, for the South End, and certainly for us, uh, investing back in the local economy in that way is also one that I think we bring great benefit to the community. Sales growth. Um, I think many of you know that uh, it's pretty busy in the store every day. <laughs> yeah. um, a slight understatement, yes, you know, it's cozy. Um, but um, if you look at just our growth, uh, we grew about 6%. We exceeded $41 million in annual sales, of which about 70% comes from members. That was not planned. <laughs> Special effects, thank you. Let's go with it. All right. So, um, you know, just amazing sales growth, um, and uh, we do hope to continue this trend once again. At the end of the day, uh, that sales growth is what enables us as a co-op to continue to, to serve the community. Member work. Oh, great! I know. All right. Um, member work, another area uh, that is not surprising, but uh, that 17,000 hours is the equivalent to about seven and a half full-time uh, people who are working with our uh, community partners, uh, the majority of which, you know, which is just once again an amazing achievement, really, that all of you are part of, so thank you. So I know there was a mention about the Rally for Ains, Joanna talked about this. Um, once again, a, a phenomenal achievement. Every day that you come to the co-op and you're asked, would you like to rally up? That change equates to something pretty significant over the last 21 months, um, a little over 230,000, averaging about uh, over $11,000 a month, of which we see half um, that amount uh, more recently has gone to the food shelf, uh, a long-standing community partner for us uh, throughout the year. And it's just, once again, um, I know we talk about it, you know, it's little bits of change that really add up to quite an amount. So thank you all, really. I just absolutely love <laughs> Classes. Um, this is really something that continues to be obviously of great interest uh, to members. Um, and we've certainly put more effort in offering uh, a diverse variety of classes. Ooh, My bad. the lights are back. Um, and we had almost 1,500 attendees attend uh, close to about 130 classes. If you haven't been to a class, by all means, please do go. You can find information on our website and also through our newsletter. So we look forward to seeing you there. The Food for All program. So, as you look at this chart, it's one thing that is very uh, concerning to us at the club. You'll see this downward trend. Now, I've been asked many a times, you know, why is it that we have this downward trend? Well, there are two reasons. The first thing is that the base in which we started up is, was pretty significant. And the other thing uh, that's been happening over the last couple of years is that federal funding. So, for those of you who don't know much or in detail about the Food Grower Program, this is really for members, and we have about a thousand members um, who are on federal grants, part of the Three Spheres Vermont, the WIC program. Um, and some of those grants over the last couple of years have been uh, gradually declining or drying out. So there is a challenge there, but even with that, um, for the last fiscal year, we were able to essentially, because of the 10% discount, uh, be able to uh, save $170,000 for those members who were able to use that for other necessities such as housing, heating, and such. The one the good trend that we are now seeing, because we've put some effort into how to address them, we still know we need to do more, but over the last quarter, so from July to September, we've actually seen an increase, both in the number of members uh, for the, who are on the Food for All program, but also an increase in sales by about 6% plus. So once again, we have some good trends and we know we want to do more, uh, specifically around bulk and produce, possibly looking at discount rates there so we can incentivize and support uh, those who um, 
who uh, are a little less fortunate. So, um, once again, uh, a very key focus for us as a core. So, this is where I get to extension. Um, and I think uh, I also met a number of members who said, I live in the South End. When are you open? I want to say, I left to open yesterday. Um, so, I think many of you know, uh, we have been going through uh, a very extensive permitting process, um, which is required. Uh, we've worked very closely with the city. Uh, we have great support from the city, and also we work very close with the community. Um, we've gone through a very extensive process that has taken us to a point as it stands now, that we are literally waiting um, for the public notice period to complete. And you know, it's probably in about 24 days, which we counting, really. Um, but we should know, and hopefully, fingers crossed, by early November, we will have our permit to be able to begin construction on a new store in the South End. So I'm not going to say it too loudly, because I don't want to jinx it, but we really appreciate, and I think there are many in here who we've engaged with, we certainly shared information about our plans. That's not just in the South End, but we've gone to all the neighborhood planning assemblies all across Burlington to really share uh, you know, our design and what we want to accomplish in the South End. So once again, uh, based on that, uh, our grand opening, uh, we've been saying sort of late summer, really late summer, early fall 2017 is what we're still on schedule for. So a quick update there. Um, the last thing I'll mention is around the Old North End. Uh, so many of you might have heard uh, about four or five months ago when we made the announcement that we are looking at a site which is across the street from the Multigen Center near Butch and Bays, uh, next to, right next to the food shelf on North Minnesota Avenue. Uh, there's a space that we're looking to potentially rent or lease. And um, we actually have uh, a meeting a special meeting with the board next week uh, with plans to come forward with really a recommendation on what we'd like to move forward on that site. So I would just say at this point, stay tuned. Uh, I know that there is a tremendous amount of excitement for a store there, um, saying, you know, thank you for coming back to our roots. That's where we're from. We are certainly excited at that opportunity, but we're also very mindful that you know, we have the South End that we've invested quite a bit of time, resource, and effort into. Whatever we end up doing, we want to do well. So just to say that, you know, stay tuned. It's a work in progress. Uh, but thank you for your continued support. So with that, hope that was quick enough. I uh, really wanted to open it up to questions. I'm sure that um, uh, many of you might have some. But at this point, uh, thank you for your patience. and listening to uh, all of our things, and yes. Um, this is, uh, I just, it's more of a comment to the board as you think about the old North End space, and I had a little talk with Pat about this on the way in, is that I want us to be mindful that maybe it could be a really different type of co-op that met the needs of low income and working people, and that we could really try to have it be something that was different than our downtown co-op and meet a different group of people, because I think if we have another co-op like our downtown co-op, it will change the neighborhood and possibly change the neighborhood in a way that attracts people who have a little more money, not a lot more money, but a little more money to the Old North End. And it's really important that um, I think for a lot of people in the Old North End, it's hard to get affordable produce and affordable food. So just my thoughts putting out there about the difference between that and Maybe this center city and south end co-ops. Did everyone hear that? That's the benefit of being in a room. I love that. Um, so I just want to uh, make one point that, uh, that really needs to be mentioned about the Old North End. Uh, we are looking at it as a different concept store. First of all, the store itself is going to be much smaller. It's going to be about 6,000 square feet of ground floor space, of which 4,500 square feet is retail. Just to put that in perspective, the, um, the current store is 12,000 square feet of retail space, so about a third of the space. Uh, the other thing to also note is that when we look at the South End, 
But the South End was a store that we um, wanted to pursue because we knew and anticipated it would offset up to 20% of the traffic away from the what we call the downtown store, our current store. Um, many of you know that you know, it's cozy for a reason because its capacity is actually around 30 million in annual sales, and we are at 41 million. So uh, a little above, and we've been looking for a long time, and so the South End plays that role. But for the Old North End, we specifically with the board looked at the Old North End as a different type of contribution. That was to provide healthy food access for that community. Uh, it wasn't driven on necessarily a business need, although we want to make sure it is viable from a business standpoint. So the thought process around that is a different type of concept store. It will focus certainly on fresh, healthy produce and um, uh, sort of grab-and-go type items. That is the intention in terms of that store concept. So I think you're, you're fantastic to point out that difference, and that's something that we're also very mindful of. But thank you for raising that. Uh, you said there were over $200,000 worth of contributions last year, and half, less than half of that went to the food shelf. Where did the other half go? So um, the question is around um, the Rally for Change program. So as you know, every month we have three nonprofit partners that um, we give the Rally for Change uh, amount to. Um, the emergency food, the Chief Emergency food, food Shelf was a, is a consistent partner of ours. So out of the three, always one has been the Emergency Food Shelf. And that changed from a 40% partner to a 50% partner earlier this year. But the other two do rotate. There's a 10% partner, and there's now a 40% partner because the emergency food shelf has become a 50% partner. So, and that, that does vary uh, by month. Um, in August, let's say one was SIVA. SIVA was a recipient, the Boys and Girls Club. We have a number of different receptions because it rotates every month, except for the Chitin and Emergency Food Shelf. Yes? Um, so, two related questions. The first is, um, uh, I, I don't know if I missed, if I just kind of missed it because my head was in this, but is, uh, what's the level of patronage refund, or is, are we get, getting a patronage refund this year? Yes, uh, we are uh, planning to give a patronage refund. Uh, it's going to be near 45%, uh, where in previous years it has been a little bit higher, but there will be a patronage refund. Wait, 45? No, normally it's been like 3 or 4%. Well, the, the actual, the, the amount of the uh, patron jury fund, what percent of the total essentially profit that we make from members, it has been in the past been as high as 50, 55%. For this year, it will be 45% of that profit amount. Okay. And then, I haven't made that other calculation. Okay. Because I haven't written the patron refund flyer yet, so what do we do? Okay. We'll put that um, and, then, and then related to that, so for that, for the, the other half, so every year we get about half of the money in cash and the other half is kind of retained by the co-op in our names. Um, has there been any discussion about uh, a certain level of accumulated capital before the oldest kind of obligations to members start being paid out? Um, so that in addition to your 45%, if you've been a member for 10 years, as new, as new funds are added, old funds go out? Um, just in terms of what we end up retaining, so the the, uh, the amount that we retain, we have been essentially saving up as part of our expansion. Um, so as you can imagine, that as we look at this expansion plan, that um, that money we will continue to hold for for expansion, and so that is the current plan. So 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 there's not like a number that's been sort of a target number set by there the is board. Okay, cool. Thank you. Other questions? Oh. Um, so, John, I, I'm sure you're aware, but most members not, may not be. <laughs> the last two years, the Hanover Co-op has gone through a lot of difficulty. They have, I, I believe, five stores now, five locations. And they had some firing of staff, and uh, members got really upset about this. And it's, been, it's been quite a, a difficult time for them. So now we're headed into an expansion. We're going to have many, two, three locations, maybe more in the future. 
So what kinds of things should we be concerned about? And, and what are you doing to anticipate that? Because Hanover ended up being very much of a corporate kind of uh, environment, uh, where the, the contact, uh, the connections between the members and the workers and the, and the top management was sort of entangled and messed up. So I'm pointing that out. It's, it's, what's your thinking on this? No, uh, great, it's a great question, um, and I think um, Jennifer alluded to this earlier. Uh, so we are internally going through uh, what we call organizational evolution. Um, and it's to that point to make sure that as we expand, we really are thoughtful on how we expand. So this is not just about building a new location and how we staff it, but how do we maintain the culture of the co-op especially when we are going through this radical change. Um, for all of you, um, as you might imagine, we've been well advised uh, from the National Cooperative Grocers um, organization, which helps support co-ops as they go through expansion, about being very mindful, especially when you go from a single store to a multi-store um, type of format, uh, some of the considerations that really need to be had around how you continue to engage staff in that discussion, uh, as well as just uh, other systematic type things to make sure that your business efficiencies remain as smooth as possible. The reality is that we have been a one-star co-op always for a very long time. There are some really great systems and relationships we have, and some of those certainly need to be revised and upgraded. And at the same time, from a cultural standpoint, in terms of how we communicate to our staff. Uh, that's an area that we are being very mindful of. So one of the things that we are doing internally is to even look at our structure. And we are very intentional in calling it evolution because we want to look at improvement. Um, we want to look at positions that really make sense and that are scalable. So every time we possibly look at another type of location or new type of business, we're not, in, not having to restructure every time. So it really is an evolution. We're having conversations with our management team, and there are about 37 managers within our 230 staff. And then we're also having all staff town hall sessions where we're actually engaging still as we're developing organization around what concerns staff may have, uh, what type of positions might be available, how we will evolve. And we've really had a, quite a deep engagement we have some timelines in terms of that input and output, and then hopefully, as we confirm timings with the South End, we'd be able to finalize it. So there is a, and once again, you know, I've spoken quite heavily to Terry Appleby, who is the, the GM at, at Hanover. Um, he has given me great advice in terms of some of the experiences they've had, not because they're negative, but just some of the transitional things. I've also spoken to other GMs in our leadership team has also engaged with other co-ops that have moved from a one-store to a multi-store approach to gain the learnings and insights from those so we can best plan. And even with the best plans, we recognize that there are going to be some hiccups. There are going to be some unknowns that we just can't anticipate. But we're doing our very best, and we're certainly communicating, if not over-communicating, with our staff so that everyone is aware of what's happening to I think by the same token, certainly we are trying to keep you all informed, whether it be through our um, newsletter, through certainly you know, our communications with you, whether it be through our neighbor planning assemblies, whether in terms of one-on-one -on -one engagement, certainly these types of events, to just keep you also informed of the change that's happening. So, you know, I certainly do appreciate that. We certainly as a management team are extremely mindful of that. We think we have a wonderful culture that is really just dedicated and committed to really do the best we can as a co-op, and we want to be thoughtful to seek that input, have that dialogue, so that when the time comes to actually take that move uh, to multi-store, that we will have people even trained in terms of how things work, how the culture is, so they can be transferred. But we, we recognize that there will be certainly some challenges. Well, um, if there are any other questions, certainly I'm going to be available as well. But uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, for coming this evening.